action. Well, hey there, movie kings and queens, and welcome to episode 13 of The Real Game Movie Show. I'm your host, Mike Lovins, and with me, as always, is the life of this podcast, my co-host, Ryan Provost. Whoa, that was punny. Ah. Uh, episode 13, the lucky episode. Yeah. Ah, so excited. How are you doing, Ryan? Oh, I'm just fantastic. How are you, Mike? I am good, thank you. So... I've got something kind of exciting this week. <gasps> Ooh. So in lieu of newsreel. No newsreel. No newsreel this week because no news is good news. <laughs> uh, I've got a couple listener comments that I wanted to read. Oh, our hate mail. Our <laughs> well, you may change your tune after you hear hear these comments. I I feel like there's a lot about me being very physically attractive over an audio uh, medium, which is al always what you want to hear. I do look better when you can't see me. Both of these comments are about your grinder profile. <laughs> uh, cool. They are not. <laughs> so um, the first one comes from Michael Grooms, and he writes, Hey, Michael. Hello, Michael. He writes, loved hearing your guys' top five list. A lot of my faves are in there. All the 80s. Ha ha. Batman 89 was very important to me, but as a young closeted kid, I lived for Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman in Batman Returns. I knew every line to that movie. Still quote it. Life's a bitch. Now so am I. Meow. Meow. So that was a, a fun comment. Yeah. Um, and uh, I happen to agree with him. Michelle Pfeiffer is certainly one of my straight crushes. Uh, yeah, she's uh, she's great. I love me some Michelle Pfeiffer. I'm glad she's uh, coming back. She's been in some stuff lately. Yeah, she's she, going to be in Ant-Man Ant and, and the Wasp. Wasp. Yeah, yeah. She, she plays the original Wasp. So uh, that'll be fun. Um, so our second one comes from Tim Owings. And, uh, quick, Hi, Timothy. Quick note about Tim. He's what? one of our straight listeners. Ew. <laughs> JK, LOL. Love ya. So uh, Tim says, great pod this week, guys. Fierce five movies. Awesome idea and very entertaining. Uh, thank you, Tim. So, uh, yeah. So, hey, I'm, I'm hoping that this catches on. And really, people, leave, leave give us some comments. And, and it doesn't even have to be good. Throw us some shade. We'll yeah. read it. Throw we'll give shade. it back to you. But tell us how awful it is to listen to us. Uh, you can comment on all of our social media, on my personal grinder profile, <laughs> uh, through, uh, on grinder. through uh, carrier pigeons. You don't know that. <laughs> I find straight people on grinder all the literal time. <laughs> yeah. Send carrier pigeons. Uh, uh, put messages in bottles and put them in a body of water and hope that they end up near us at some point whatever gets there message in the bottle yeah is that a song or did you just make that up that's the police the 80s sting moving on i was a baby mike okay <laughs> so this <laughs> i was a baby in the 80s no you weren't no i wasn't <laughs> all right so this week we saw life of the party Woo! Life of the party. And uh, so some of the, the top build cast in that is Melissa McCarthy, of course. Of course. Obviously. Um, but uh, some other folks that people might recognize in there are Steven Root, um, Maya Rudolph, Chris Parnell, and if you watch Modern Family, Julie Bowen. Mm -hmm. So, um, And then, of course, there's tons of other people in there that you might not know by name. Um, but, uh, so the plot of the movie, it's a pretty simple one. After her husband abruptly asks for a divorce, a middle-aged mother returns to college in order to complete her degree. Um, what the plot doesn't, uh, get into though, is that she goes to school with her daughter. Yeah. And that's kind of the, 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 the big, uh, the bulk of the movie has to, has to do with that particular 
plot points. The so. driving theme, one yes. would say. Thank you. The driving theme. Um, so it was directed by Ben Falcone. Who is Melissa McCarthy's husband. Her hubby. Um, and I got to say, this is much better than the last two times they've worked together. <laughs> I, I was not a fan of Tammy or the boss, and uh, those were the other two that they had worked on together. Well, I mean, those movies were the first two movies he directed, so maybe he got his feet under him and learned a lot about how to make a good movie and applied that knowledge yeah. here. I haven't seen Tammy or the boss. They're movies I've thought, oh... I could watch those because I like Melissa McCarthy, but then I never do. So yeah. I just haven't. Yeah. Stick to Spy. <laughs> spy is good. Yeah. I, I like, like spy. spy. I like Spy. What were your initial thoughts of, of this movie? Did you, did you enjoy it? So going in, I didn't know what to think. So did you see what the Rotten Tomato score was for this one? It's not good. It's not good. It is 39. Yeah. Which I feel like went up. I feel like it was even lower than that. I feel like it was in the 20s when I looked before I went. And maybe it's gone up. So I thought, oh, no. Because a lot of people have really cooled on Melissa McCarthy. Yeah. Feel like she's a little bit of a maybe a one-trick pony. Kind of has her shtick. Yeah. Same criticism that people have of someone like Will Ferrell. You know, always plays the same character. Uh, I, and I, I've, I've heard comparisons like with... Uh, rebel wilson like just always yeah. kind of the um the bumbling heavy set uh you know person kind of playing that same role over and over again right so going in i was a little apprehensive and maybe i just like what melissa mccarthy does but i really enjoyed this movie I, it and i'll get more into the details i wasn't as on board with it towards the beginning of the movie, but as yeah. the movie progressed, yep, yep. it really hit its stride and was really funny. I really enjoyed myself and got a lot of really great laughs out of it. So overall, I'm going to be pretty positive on this one with some, with some critiques, but, sure. but I said the same thing about, I feel pretty and Amy Schumer. If you are an Amy Schumer fan, I told you, you should see that. If you're a Melissa McCarthy fan, you should see this movie. If you despise Melissa McCarthy or you think that her her shtick is really tired, you probably yeah, you won't not. like it. Uh, so it, I think, and I think everyone pretty much has an opinion on her at this point, and so they probably know whether or not they would like it before they even go to the movie. When I went into this movie, I actually had pretty low expectations, so the as the movie started, yeah, it was kind of it kind of felt like typical Melissa McCarthy to me, but it 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 certainly picked up, like you said, and yeah, I enjoyed it. I I really came out of there pleasantly surprised. Are you a Melissa McCarthy fan? You know, I'm I'm I don't know that I would call myself a Melissa McCarthy fan, but I don't dislike her. You know what I mean? It's like um, I'm not going to see a movie because it's a Melissa McCarthy movie, um, but I certainly. I'm not going to not see a movie because she's in it. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, it does. I, I think she's put out a lot of stuff and not all of it is the best. So I don't go see everything she puts out. And if honestly, if not for this podcast, I may have waited yeah. for this one until same, same until yeah. it was on Netflix or something. But, uh, I really I like her comedy and when she when she's doing well she does really well. At her worst, she is just kind of a recycled version of herself at her best, if that makes sense. Yeah. No, she's I kind of that. doing yeah. the same beats, yep. but maybe not as funny as she's done them before. Which is I what I assume is the case with something like Tammy or something like The Boss, and why I assume the score is pretty low for this movie is in terms of Rotten Tomatoes and critics. Yeah, but I will say this: as an SNL fan, she is one of the best SNL hosts. If she is hosting, I am 
for sure watching. And I I liked the uh, the SNL tie-ins, uh, the, these SNL cast tie-ins to this to this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we can get into that later too. Yeah. But uh, um, but did you see uh, Melissa McCarthy actually was on SNL this past weekend? I didn't see this past one. So she stopped by uh, for Weekend Update and played Michael Che's stepmom okay and just does i mean she's so melissa mccarthy it's 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 one of those very standard melissa mccarthy characters where she was just this very loving stepmom but kind of overbearing and intrusive like telling him oh read a story i'll just be here and then would like interrupt and tell him he was doing a great job and all that kind of stuff i thought it was really funny but yeah I, i i like her a lot great and her sean spicer is yeah was great spicy very spicy very great all right well let's uh let's go ahead and dig a little bit into the movie then let's dig pick up that shovel mike all right so uh, talking about the the first part of the movie her pre-divorce character is what kind of felt to me like the uh the 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 melissa mccarthy character that we don't like yes yeah that was something that stood out to me as as not great is that over the top almost kind of a caricature of yeah. a mom that she plays right the the bad, the wig bad hair, and the yeah. big glasses and, the and sweaters right. and all that kind of stuff and I, when i real i didn't know till after the movie that it was her husband who was the director and it kind of makes sense now that the reason they do that is because in his eyes she's probably you know the most beautiful woman in the world as she should be. Right. Uh, so he wants to make her super homely and super matronly. And for <laughs> he probably has to, you know, he has to do that. Cause she, she's probably the apple of his eye. Right. Uh, which is adorable and lovely. Uh, but I just think they go too over the top with that. Especially when you see her transformation, I feel like it should have been more subtle. Yeah. I feel like she should have been kind of, you know, a caricature mom in, in some ways, you know, maybe like, uh, it was like long Capri shorts or yeah. whatever, or whatever those things are. And, I know what you're talking about. And though. just like very motherly looking, not the best hair, but like not that like crazy, over the top look that she had going. Yeah, maybe if it was more like hair pulled back in a ponytail and right. like a bad t shirt or or something exactly. like exactly like that. And yeah. a fanny pack or like yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, just very, very motherly. It didn't come off as it all like it almost made her look like a grandma. A grandma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what I thought. It it made her it aged her. It just didn't maybe maybe though that's supposed to propel the idea of then why her husband was leaving and like, she's supposed to, you know, she's so he's leaving her for like the younger, prettier woman. Yeah. But like they could have done that with just like the standard, almost mom look. Yeah. I feel, yeah. I, and even like her personality, I, I feel like it still could have been the same personalities, exact same lines delivered pretty much the exact same way. Yeah. Just the look. I wish it had been just kind of a standard, mom look you know <laughs> it, it just would have made it a little it would have made the transformation a little more believable because then she turns into this right super cool lady and you know melissa mccarthy i think actually is really gorgeous she's very pretty um i think that i think i think the difference is is like she's got a mom look but they needed a 2010s mom look not an 80s mom look yeah, because 80s mom look is 2010's grandma look. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I wish they would have made her feel more mom and less grandma. I think they were trying to make her physically unattractive, and they yeah. didn't need to do that. Like, Melissa McCarthy is a very beautiful person, so just make her, you know, all mommed up, and then when she gets transformed it's not this like crazy 180 it's just she's got a little bit of a younger look hipper outfits that kind of thing it just would have made that transformation a little more believable sure no i get that so yeah the the movie did not 
start very strong for me. And I feel like some of the, the parts of the movie where they're having to set it up, set up this premise, set up the, her going back to school and all that. I just, I don't know. I, what I didn't really like the scene of her and her parents, of Melissa McCarthy and her parents house. It was just kind of, yeah. And, and, and I like Steven Root. Yeah, me too. But I didn't believe him as her father. No. And because like the, the woman that was paired up then to that was supposed to be his wife, for some reason to me, they didn't seem like they were. Well, maybe part of that was because they made Melissa McCarthy look so old with her yeah. get up. Yeah. Like if she had just looked like a mom, like standard mom, maybe it would have been a little more believable. I mean, the only part of that scene I, I thought was kind of funny was how the mom just kept trying to feed her <laughs> kept trying to like offer a sandwich yeah let me make a sandwich because that's such a mom thing mom's all <laughs> mom's always want to feed you <laughs> and that's the answer to every every problem so that was kind of funny i liked that but nothing else about that scene yeah like when the, when the dad walked out with a gun yeah i'm like that scene played so out, just out of the left field and and it just wasn't funny (laughs) to me yeah i guess that's it yeah if you're that's the thing if you're gonna do something that's been done a million times you gotta do it in a unique different way maybe to make it funny and it just wasn't well and and so let's back up just a little bit to when the husband is uh, saying that he wants a divorce yeah before she even goes to her parents um there was something about that that scene that uh i just didn't feel like I mean, it just it just seemed weird how they went from this scene of saying goodbye to your daughter and like you're still pulling away and I want a divorce. Um, I mean, I I, I totally get that. Maybe I'm gl- maybe I'm glad they did it just to move the movie along. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like cut out those few seconds it takes to show them back at home or whatever. But uh, yeah, the the early gags in this movie, the setup just didn't didn't do it for me too much yeah either yeah that scene i mean it was fine it i wasn't... guess i guess where it was was fine or whatever but f- for whatever reason it was just the reveal of him wanting a divorce for some reason just it was very abrupt yeah i think that's... i think that was kind of i think maybe that was a little bit of the point too was it was supposed to be abrupt like she wasn't supposed to see it coming and yeah. I guess we weren't supposed to see it coming, even though it's the entire premise right. of the movie. <laughs> I guess so, yeah. But, uh, yeah. And the racquetball scene, that one didn't really do too much for me. I mean... Oh, yeah. Maya Rudolph, I think that was her first scene, and, and I'll talk more about her later, but she, of all of her scenes, that was probably the weakest. It was okay. It just... Yeah, the whole setup, it just it went a little slow for me. Wasn't set up the strongest things like you mentioned like were very abrupt at times and too dragged out at different times maybe the timing Mm -hmm. wasn't just there just yeah now one thing that uh that i've heard some people say is that they feel like that it's in some ways kind of a uh a retake on on the back to school movie with uh rodney dangerfield did you ever see that uh i did not okay (laughs) I mean, for me, the I guess the movie that's more my generation that it's maybe closer to would be old school. The, okay. The premise of you know middle aged or older people going back to to school or living the college life. That's that's probably more the movie of my generation that that I think of, and maybe this is kind of a female version. Yeah, I can see that. that. I can see that. So. It's a, I mean, it's a, it's a premise that's been around for a long time. I guess is what yeah, I'm yeah, saying. Yeah. It's not. It's been. Uh, it's this was not the first movie to think of the concept of an older person going back to school. <laughs> but once the movie got going, once the premise was established, and they're in it, and they're doing, she's in school. She's there. I thought it really picked up and started once it found its stride really hit some high notes. And I really, I really, that's when I really started enjoying the movie. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, I, I agree with that. 
it got it 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 became fun right yeah because they weren't concerned about setting setting everything up it they were concerned about actually exploring this world with these characters and what they could do with it and that that was it was so fun i had a i had a blast once they got to that point i liked the interesting um kind of dynamics between the 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 girls in the uh in the uh, uh what are they called? it's not a sorority frat sorority thank you <laughs> <laughs> look i like frats better i'm sorry I, well, hey agreed <laughs> i couldn't Same. think of the name um but uh it was i, I actually it was kind of cool too how you know so this is the daughter's senior year and uh so well i guess her senior year too but um so it was kind of already established that the mom knew some of the some of the friends and and then got to to know like the the other new girl in in school that coma girl oh my god that was a, that was a little bit of a weird premise i thought they did a good job with it but it was a little off the walls it, it was off the wall but i i actually kind of liked it yeah yeah i really like I, I they did a really good job of setting up uh a lot of these i i liked how they built some of these characters and how some of them played off each other like her uh her roommate Lenore I, or Leonor. Leonor. <laughs> I loved her. And yeah. I, I loved how their their relationship too kind of gradually got a little closer. Exactly. Yeah. And it was just uh it was very cute. <laughs> like a You're my best friend. Yeah. <laughs> it was really funny. I thought that was that was a great character. And then there's a payoff towards the end of the movie, so that yeah, character yeah. doesn't just exist to exist. Exactly. There's a there's a point to her. It's kind of a silly point, but it's it's it's, it's good. Very it's silly, fun. But... It's fun. It's fine. Uh, so that character, just how they played off each other, the mom and all of the friends. Uh, I forget the redhead's name, but I thought she was really funny. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They were all how they all played off each other was I thought really well. I, th- I thought it worked really well. I thought it was funny and good. So after she's kind of done up and they go to the party, she she catches the eye of. Of one of the cute college boys. Yeah. She embraces her cougarousness. Right. And uh, we learn a little bit about the Google. The Google. <laughs> um, but uh, it was kind of funny how dude was into her. Yeah. Yeah, he was. That I like that, though. I, <laughs> I thought that was, I mean, I... I thought that was great. I I really liked that he just was head over heels for yeah. her and chasing her this entire movie. I I loved that. I thought it was especially I mean, he's just oh, so dreamy. Yeah. He was very dreamy. Uh and I I thought that was a lot of fun. It wasn't she, every, every time she she like kept trying to break it off, but then well, honestly, so before they got to that scene, they had a scene of her in the classroom, and that's when we met Chris Parnell yeah. as the professor, and I thought that there was going to be a connection between her and him. Absolutely. And yep. so that threw me for a curveball uh, when it was Jack, the the, the youngster, and yeah. I... I kind of I really liked that that turn because I was completely expecting her and Chris Parnell to to hit it off. So by the end of the movie, though, I still thought that it was being played that she and Chris Parnell would still end up getting together at the end. Uh, that, with how the characters played out, it would have been a little abrupt. I feel like for that to happen. Yeah, I mean that that's a criticism I have because Chris Parnell, I think, is outstanding i love chris parnell i think he is so funny and he gets some moments in this movie but i thought they underutilized him that's fair a little bit i wish he would have had a bit of a larger role in this movie he so he was on snl before he does a lot of voice work now he's serial on the show archer if you watch that um and then he just has a lot of like really small parts in a lot of TV shows and movies and things. And I I wish they would find something for him to be able to kind of be the the lead for. I think he has I don't know, there's just something about him that is so flippin' funny to me. 
I could see him being more though sitcom lead than movie lead. I think he would I think it would be too on the nose for him to be in like a standard studio audience kind of sitcom. Uh-huh. I think it would have to be something maybe even a little darker where like he's like this like he's a, kind of this goofy character but the whole world around him is really like depressing and dark and he's trying to be positive the entire time maybe. I I don't know. I just feel like he as an actor is underutilized and he in this movie as an actor was yeah. also underutilized cuz he's just got that kind of goofy dad vibe, you know? Mhm. That's just hilarious to me. And between the two of them there were certainly plenty of dad jokes. Which I'm sure you were living, <laughs> living for, Mike. I Oh, my gosh. You could have played that part. I know, right? They, you missed your break. You missed it. I missed it. That, were, that was the role you were born to play. <laughs> Archaeology professor with lots of puns. Yeah. Mummy puns. One of the things that I, I thought about this this movie, too, was so the, the daughter, her name was Maddie. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought it was really nice that that they gave her an Asian boyfriend and then there were no like no stereotype kind of things done with you know he was just just her boyfriend and um it's it's nice to see Hollywood kind of mixing up their their couples. Yeah, I I mean I mean his, just... his part wasn't that great but well I I think it's just Hollywood catching up with the times. You know like that's something that shouldn't stick out at all because it's it's very commonplace and normal now for mixed it mixed is race mixed gender mixed yeah. everything relationships but it's it's worth i think though make sure hollywood knows that we like that they do that and, and make sure that they continue to go in that direction well yeah and i i, I guess it's it's less about praising Hollywood for going in that direction, I think, because, <laughs> okay. like, duh, like, you should just be there. Sure. Uh, but more, like, good for – it's good, great for actors because I think so many times – and you see it. There's backlash when movies are adapted from books and – a character is a different race than what maybe a lot of readers assumed they would be, which is usually white. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and some people get really upset about that, but we live in a world where we should be past that. And I think it's great that more roles are open to more people. And, it's, and it's, it probably was at some point, not probably, I'm sure it absolutely was at some point where, okay, well, the actress we got for this is white. So we got to go find some white guy to play our boyfriend or, you know, whatever, insert whatever race there. Yeah, yeah. To, uh, and so it probably just opens up roles for more talent, talented actors and actresses to get opportunities, which is, again, I don't even want to praise Hollywood for it. Cause that's how it should have been. Just be, yeah, that's fair. Forever. But, you know, I'm more happy for the actors who are probably getting chances that they wouldn't have gotten even 10 years ago because Hollywood has finally caught up to what <laughs> our culture is. Right. So what what scene or or scenes would you say kind of stand out to you from the movie? As like funniest? Uh, funniest or most entertaining or or what was glaring as something that was that was bad, but... I mean, the bad part parts I've already cut, but like the worst scenes I've already True. kind of talked yeah. about kind of the setup of the movie. Uh, my favorite scenes. And that's the thing. That's why I would recommend this movie to folks is because there are some scenes that are painfully funny. Yeah. And by that, I mean, I was laughing so hard. It kind of hurt. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, the one scene for me that was like that was her presentation yes oh my god i was dying yeah. i was dying laugh i was l- literally in pain tears coming out of my eyes laughing the tissue stuck to the, f- the well oh my god when those <laughs> tissues suck to her face <laughs> lord have mercy i was it was that is melissa mccarthy at her best that's yeah. when she's doing full melissa mccarthy but like at the absolute 100% best version of that. Uh-huh. Uh, 
it was hysterical. Everyone in my theater was dying, absolutely dying. Yeah. Um, I think for me, um, my my favorite scene was the eighties party that they went to. I, I yeah, that was a lot of fun. Her dancing, yes. was great when she did that backward was that a backwards like worm a backward worm yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, yes and so it killed me so the the girl that kind of played the um like the, the bully the bully yeah for, for lack of a better word um so, i don't even know did she even have a name in the movie uh i i don't know I can't remember if they... Yeah. We're just from here on out going to refer to her as the bully. And as if the, you see the movie, you know exactly who we're talking about. So, but from watching all those Disney Channel shows with my kids for so many years... She's on some of them, right? Yes. And um, no, most notably, she had her own show and it was called Jessie. And like, <laughs> she's like this nanny to like this house full of adopted multicultural children and stuff like that. And it's like... And now in this movie, she's like a total bitch. And it's just like so different than than what I'm used to seeing her play. But it was kind of funny. I mean, I didn't like her, but. <laughs> For more of Mike's thoughts on this, listen to our other podcast, The Real Gay Disney Channel Show. Because <laughs> Mike knows all about. Hey, Jesse. Hey, <laughs> Jesse. Yeah, I know, I know them all. <laughs> How many times have you referred to the Disney Channel in the course of us talking about movies over these 13 episodes it's it's definitely greater than one <laughs> you speak about what you know man you speak about what you know <laughs> and mike knows current day disney that's channel. the thing though when when all these when all these young disney channel stars are like starting to take roles in these like more adult films and stuff like that and i and i'm seeing them i'm like it it stands out to me like a sore thumb i love when uh, grown up Disney stars end up in adult films. <laughs> Where's Zach Efron's? So, ne- well, <laughs> <laughs> one can dream. Uh, yeah, I had a couple other favorites. Uh, oh, oh, sorry, sorry. So, I was just going to mention one more thing about the '80s party. Go ahead. Um, was that? Uh, so, I loved that she was dressed as Delta Burke from Designing Women. I did not catch. See, that at all. I had a feeling. I had a feeling. But she, uh, yeah, so she she was dressed as Delta Burke from Designing Women, and I thought it was hilarious. Delta because, Burke from Designing Women, not because, Delta Work from RuPaul's Drag Race. Right. <laughs> so references I know, references, references you know. I know. <laughs> Correct. All right. Sorry about that. Go ahead. You can you can continue with your thought. Now. You continue with your piddling little thought. <laughs> uh no i really liked the uh that scene in the restaurant okay we're okay we're in spoiler territory yeah. now because i have to spoil the most like ju- I, my jaw dropped it felt, yes i you and i was so mad at myself i should have seen it coming a million miles away and i my, I I heard the entire theater gasp <laughs> when they revealed that Jack, who Melissa McCarthy is sleeping with, is uh, her ex husband's now what, ex, was it fiance? Point, fiance yeah, yeah, fiance's son. And <laughs> oh my gosh, I we, loved Maya, Maya Rudolph's reaction yes. to that. Oh, that was. The which she was just dying. <laughs> well, before even that, but okay, before we get to that reveal, yeah, when they uh reveal that they are engaged, yeah, and Gary, <laughs> Gary is saying muscle top, <laughs> my Rudolph's like, read the moment, Gary, <laughs> just yelling at him and berating, berating him for being happy for them <laughs> right. instead of berating them. <laughs> right, <laughs> I hate Gary. <laughs> <laughs> that whole scene yeah. from that and then the reveal of jack being uh uh what's her julie bowen's yeah. son mm. and my real just laughing and being like, this is the best night of my life you know? and i don't know if it was the movie itself or if it was just in the particular theater that i was in but 
the sound was kind of quiet. So people were laughing so hard. I was missing half the lines. Yeah. And, but you, you keep laughing though, because like everybody's laughing. Oh, it was, that was, yes. That was another scene that was just laugh out loud. I yeah. was on the floor, just, oh, it was so good. So good. So funny. Yeah. I love it. Cause that. it was the, I mean, it was the best of Melissa McCarthy with the best of Maya Rudolph, who is a treasure. Maya Rudolph is so good. Similar to Chris Parnell, maybe has gotten a little more attention than Chris Parnell, but she's played so many kind of smaller parts. I was gonna say she she's always that that good friend. Yeah, I mean she was great in uh, Sisters. She yeah. was their like social rival. Oh. Uh, she's always always good. Another great SNL alum who I wish would get even more because she oh she's so funny. Uh, yeah, so that was just the best of. All of those, all of those characters, all those actors. Um, I have one more scene. Okay. Do you have another one? No, go ahead. Okay. My other, <laughs> my other scene I really enjoyed, and it was only because it was Melissa McCarthy being full Melissa McCarthy, and I liked it a lot. Was the initiation scene? Yeah. <laughs> when they paddled her. <laughs> <laughs> <And> <laughs> Her daughter smacked the shit out of her. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I it's... felt it. <laughs> she goes, are, are you still hitting me? <laughs> just like, <laughs> just like screaming and yelling. <laughs> uh, oh. That was, uh, that, that was all her. I mean, just being full, funny Melissa McCarthy. Again, like the best version of her that a yeah. lot of people are kind of tired of, but I still just eat up and love because she's just such a natural talent. And that's the thing with someone like Melissa McCarthy, like Will Ferrell, uh, you know, like some of these people who get accused of playing the same thing. The reason they keep getting chances to play the same kind of character is because that's their natural charisma that launched them to stardom. Mm -hmm. So of course they're going to keep doing it. And when it's its best, it's amazing. And when it's its worst, it's kind of repetitive. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You know what I mean? And so I am not offended that Melissa McCarthy kind of keeps well, shooting for these kinds of things. Because when it really works, it's amazing. Right. And, and so when it doesn't, it doesn't, you move on. Exactly. If you don't like it, you don't watch it again or, or, you know, but, um, but yeah, that scene, so funny. I was, I think I missed a couple of the things she was screaming that were funny because I was laughing so hard. Yeah. Um, so one thing I want to kind wanted to kind of just say was that, um, she didn't have any, any major obstacles to overcome. Okay. Um, so, it did kind of help. The, I will say this. It, it helped the movie move along. Um, but, you know, it's like the the daughter kind of got over the the idea of her parents getting divorced pretty quickly and, and accepted that her mom was going to be her her college mate pretty quickly. Even when. OK, so going back to that dinner scene then or no, 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 it wasn't the dinner scene. It was the reception scene, but they cut her off the. The ex-husband and the and his new wife cut her off financially, so wh which also, by the way, super funny scene when they all get really high <laughs> on the chocolate bark on the t the chocolate bark, yeah, uh, and go destroy the wedding reception of her ex-husband. Yeah, I forgot to mention that one. Hilarious. Um, but uh, so just that even like her getting financially cut off, they have this party to raise money. Her parents show up with money. You know, it's like she didn't even have to have worried about that. And she doesn't take her parents' money. Yeah, but I did. I did think that was a little weird that her. I didn't like that. That thing where her parents gave her the money. Yeah, that it, that you're right. That completely. I thought that at the moment, too. I was like, this completely invalidates. Thank you. Everything. Yeah. <laughs> her parents fully just could have paid for her college and half this premise just goes out the window exactly yeah, yeah for so, sure so yeah. that's 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 where i was going with all of that and that's one thing where it's like one line you just have to take that little part out and the stakes are still there right but i i think overall i didn't mind that there weren't any huge obstacles i mean the the big the big obstacle for her was just starting her life starting over her life back over and going back 
to this moment where she really regrets dropping out of school and navigating that as someone who you know may not fit in and i kind of liked this again it i think if this movie is made in the 80s or 90s yeah everyone's against her she has such a hard time her daughter hates her all this kind of stuff i kind of like the more millennial twist of you know mom and daughter being best friends yeah. and being fully embraced i thought that made it feel maybe to me it kind of felt a little more made it feel modern okay made it feel more of this time i feel like if everyone had been like you old person that would have felt a little more dated because one of the things that's fair okay yeah. i get that i get that i mean and because i worked in a college setting not too long ago. Uh, that was my first career. And uh, and it, it's true. Kids are so close with their parents these days. I mean, they really are kind of on a, many are on a like best friend basis with their, with their parents. So it, it, it's a little more believable than I think it would have been in the past. I get that. Yeah. So it's more reflective of now. I think, I think so. Because I, I struggled with that a little bit at first. Too. I was like, wow, everyone's just kind of embracing her. But yeah. I was like, well, I mean, that is kind of a reflection of the time we're living in. It's not my experience. I'm guessing from your reaction, it wasn't yours either. <laughs> <laughs> but nope. but it is kind of uh, current, yeah. I guess. My problem was with... My problem was with the bully. Like... Okay, what was the purpose of her character? What was the arc? Yeah, because... Like, she was just mean to her for the sake of being mean to her. I mean, there was... Okay, take her character out of this movie. What does it change? Nothing. Exactly. Yeah. She was completely uninteresting and unnecessary. Yeah. Like, they were so all in on Melissa McCarthy's character being embraced being accepted by pretty much everyone except this one character and so the fact that this one character had such a big problem with it for no apparent reason was so weird like it felt weird it felt awkward it's like no one cares but you and you have no you're not in the sorority (laughs) you have one class with this woman and you (laughs) are fully out to just destroy her for apparently no reason. Yeah. Just because she's ancient. <laughs> it just, yeah, it just, it rubbed me the wrong way. That character seems so inauthentic. Like, I, I was thinking, like, who would actually care that much? You know? Yeah. <laughs> About some lady that sits behind you in your archaeology I mean, class. I had some some older people in my classes when I was uh, in school. And no one was like that no one was this no one would just like snap at them for being there uh it was yeah it just it i did not like that so let's let's kind of start getting into that end party let's let's talk about that sure um you know so melissa mccarthy snaps her fingers and half of the school's population just disintegrates it was crazy i can't wait to see Life of the Party, part two in a year. (laughs) The McCarthy War. (laughs) (laughs) Um, No, so as the movie goes on, like I said, she loses her her financial standing with from her ex. Yeah. And so she's going to drop out, you know, so then the uh, the girls from the uh, sorority. uh, See, I got it that time. The girls from the, uh, decide we're going to have a party and we're going to raise the money. Um, and nobody shows up. Which I like that. I Because in every one of these movies, they throw a party and everyone comes. Uh, and that's just not how parties right. <laughs> work necessarily. Yeah. Um, or at least my parties don't. <laughs> my, mine were always banging. Oh, yeah. Not mine. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh. but, uh, so I, I actually, it's kind of funny how they, they made, um, coma girl to have this like 
massive Twitter following because of the circumstances of her coma. Which I guess, yeah, did kind of bring in that character's weird off-the-wall storyline to yeah. make it relevant enough. Yeah. It, 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 I wonder if that's something they almost like wrote in towards the end when they realized they got to the scene they're like wait how do we get how do we make that work yeah yeah it's it's possible but um but it works so she she tells everybody so apparently christina aguilera is playing somewhere in town and they, she says that she's gonna be coming to the party and if you come to the to their party pay 20 bucks or whatever it is to get in christina's gonna show up did you have any doubt in your mind that christina would actually show up absolutely not <laughs> Absolutely not. I, yeah, I was like, it's yeah, just it was, building up. I actually felt like the movie was going to end with like Christina Aguilera performing with them on the stage with like the credits, like beside it or uh-huh. over it or something. I thought it was totally going to, it didn't quite, the movie extends beyond that. Yeah. But I was like, oh, that's how the movie's going to end. We got the money. Right. And Christina singing a song and credits. And so it, it became more about, Okay, not does Christina show up, but what leads to her showing up? Yep. And that's where the roommate comes in. Leonore or Lenore. Yeah. So she's like my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> I that I thought that that uh, that was a good way to to use that character. Yeah. Um so, uh, really has like no purpose throughout the movie, but then just and at the end, like she ends up kind of being like the hero of the day. Right. Um, well, I loved how I, I did think it was funny how she just didn't really think much of Christina at all. And Christina was like, we were best friends. You know, and you're so great. And Christina is like fawning all over her. I yeah, thought yeah, that yeah. was a cute that was little cute. thing. Um, you know what this movie made me think? I thought it, I, th- I was like, man, Christina is such a bad actress. This is why I she, thought that too. This is why she's never in movies. And I was like, wait, she had a whole movie. She was in burlesque. She wasn't just in burlesque. She was like, she was burlesque. <laughs> Which, this is going to be a hot gay take, but uh, burlesque, not a good movie. I never saw it. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> Even Cher couldn't get me to see that movie. No. It's bad. It's so bad. And she's, she being Christina is bad. Uh. And Cher is just Cher. And which I love Cher, but she's just Cher on, yeah. on a screen. And uh, so she was sharing the screen. Anyway. But yeah. Oh my God. Christina had like three lines in this movie and they were all terrible. They really were. It was so bad <laughs> you could tell she did not want to be there and she showed up for her paycheck and then her facial expressions completely you could tell on her face she had no desire to be anywhere near that movie set she was lip syncing for her life oh hey you learned a thing see <laughs> you learned a thing oh yeah so uh yeah she just yeah she was she was bad. But, I mean, it was a fine way to, to get her there. Yeah. Uh, but one, one criticism I would have, another criticism I'd have of this movie, I don't know if it's criticism, uh, but I think I may have said this about one of the other comedies we reviewed. I feel like this movie was a lot of solid premises that could have been just, like, individual snl sketches okay yep. that are kind of crammed together yep to make a movie like i had one plot to pull it all together but a lot of the steps were just this could have been a funny snl sketch i mean it even had a musical guest star <laughs> that's so true well <laughs> and, it, and and like the uh talking about uh her, her you know her having to give her her speech we, we mentioned that earlier yeah that to me that scene that could have been a great Melissa McCarthy SNL sketch. sketch. Yep. Yeah, for yep. sure. Uh, so that's a little bit, I mean, kind of a criticism, but also not really. I mean, it's kind of poking, yeah. poking holes for the sake of doing so. Sure. Um, I think we should go ahead and move on to our takes. Let's do it, Mike. All right. Let's get your gayest take. 
I mean, my gay is take. Come on, Jack. Jesus. What a beautiful man. Same. Yeah. <laughs> like, sit on my face, Jack. So damn sexy. Ugh. Yeah. So, and, and I looked up, looked him up. His name is, is Luke Benward. Mm-hmm. I don't recognize anything else that he was in. Oh, no, no, no. I take that back. He was in um, Girl Meets World. Another fucking Disney Channel thing. Uh, <laughs> Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, other than that, I mean, I, I don't know where he's coming from, but I'm I looking forward to I seeing hoped. where he's going. <laughs> oh, I, thought I was going to say, I don't know where he's coming from, but I know where I hope he's coming next. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, bum. uh, yeah, um, he was, I always enjoy a little eye candy in a movie and man. Yeah. Was he that? Oh, he was a lollipop. He was beautiful. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and I'll tell you what, from my perspective, I think that, uh, you know, I like that he has a an appreciation for age and beauty. <laughs> I think if he were gay, he'd totally be into daddies. <laughs> <laughs> Is that because he was into mommies? That's right. <laughs> it totally wow. works that way, right? If he was gay, he'd totally be into daddies. Yeah. If an actor is paid to play a part that is into a certain type of person then in real life they are totally also into that but the opposite sexual orientation exactly yeah that's actually a phrase like people say that all the time all the time verbatim yeah (laughs) well since we share (laughs) Uh, since we share the same uh gay estate go ahead and uh, give your shade i mean i won't spend much time on it because we already kind of talked about it but just how completely unnecessary and really kind of rubbed me the wrong way as a movie viewer the bully character was and her little bully friend they gave her a bully friend who was even less relevant and necessary uh so i just didn't like them didn't think they were great thought they actually took away from the movie sometimes a character may not add to the movie but doesn't take away from it i thought these characters actually took away from the movie and took me out of it anytime they were a central part of it you know what's funny same same ah um uh, i went one step further though and just and added just that uh to emphasize also some shade that was thrown in the movie um i liked when uh melissa mccarthy was actually throwing shade at the characters during that uh the dance off at the 80s party and she's like pushing the girl on the in the head and like pushing her back yeah. and um so uh so yeah it was those those girls and the actual shade that Melissa McCarthy threw at them. Yeah, cool. So, well, shit. If we if we tied on the slate, I'm gonna be very surprised. Well, I had I had co slays. Okay, I had co slays. Uh, one is an SNL alum, and one is uh one of the most current SNL members who just I think she just started this season. Uh, so I mean, my slay, Maya Rudolph. Yeah, she's just so freaking funny same and she just kidding (laughs) she didn't quite steal the movie but she definitely stole every scene she was in Uh uh-huh uh anytime she was in a scene she just was all i could pay attention to she just i love maya rudolph so much uh it makes me miss some of the characters. Like she did such a great winnie houston on saturday night live (laughs) yeah her yes she did hilarious uh, her Beyonce, yeah, was so good. I just, I love, I love that woman. Uh, and then Heidi Gardner, who is Lenore slash Leonore. Okay. Uh, she, so she's been on SNL this year. I think this was her first, this is either her first or second. Year. I didn't know that she was on there. Yeah, uh, this is her, either her first or second year on the show, and she's really hit or miss for me. Okay on the show but after seeing her in this movie i was like okay you clearly got something you can be she's just not getting the the right maybe not i don't know if they figured out how to use her i feel like she could be i mean as far as like current political things go she could be a great ivanka but they gave that to scarlett johansson because she's scarlett johansson well, and she's uh, with Colin Jost. Oh yeah, that's They're right. Dating, yep, so yep, yep. That's why she always. So, but I think she could do a great uh, Ivanka, and she's had a couple like recurring characters on Weekend Update 
but like she just really hasn't in sketches done much at all and i just feel like they haven't figured out how to use her but after seeing this movie i'm like oh my gosh when they figure out how to use her she's gonna be good uh i've been really every time i see her on the screen this season of s and i'm like Ugh. now has she been one of the what is it when they go through the cast and they say featuring i think she, i think she's in the main cast i don't know i always so i always watch it on i'm too old to, i'm either okay i'm either out when snl is on uh-huh. with friends or i am asleep <laughs> <laughs> there's no in between i'm there. not just i am never just chilling at home on a saturday night at like 11 30 <laughs> i am either out or i'm asleep yeah those are the two options so i anytime i watch snl it's always on hulu uh the next day or a day or two after uh so i i always skip past the opening uh -huh. the credits so i don't know i would guess she'd be featuring but i'm not sure all right who slayed this party for you mike um well i've kind of mentioned her a couple times but uh so jillian jacobs helen coma girl okay that character just i'm not even sure exactly what it was to be honest with you but I just that I loved that character. There was something about her personality. Um, I loved the chemistry between her and Melissa McCarthy. Yeah, and I don't know. This is this is probably kind of weird, and you might not see this at all. But for some reason, she reminds me of some kind of cross between Margot Robbie and Anne Hathaway. <laughs> yeah, can you see that at all? Sure. I mean, I don't know why that makes me like her or not, but um, I just when I kept watching her, I was like. Who does she remind me of? And sometimes it was Margot Robbie. Sometimes it was Anne Hathaway. Yeah. Um, but uh, I don't know what else she's done. I'll have to look that up and and, and check it out. But um, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see what she does next. Good choice. Solid choice. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Who is your no ma'am? I mean, not to beat a dead Disney Channel horse, <laughs> but uh debbie ryan debbie ryan that's her name yeah yeah, yeah, the, yeah the bully hey jesse the bully character just again again i don't you did not like her well i mean there have been times in the past where i've said you know this the actor wasn't given much with this role and mm -hmm. I, she definitely was not given much with this role but i'm giving her my no no ma'am because not only was she not given much but she took the character in the opposite direction that I thought she should have. Gotcha. Like she was, she wasn't. So a bully can either be played as like fun, mean, like they're having fun making fun of this person. And they're, they're trying to play it for laughs. Like, Hey, let's all make fun of this person. So they're like trying to really hone, hone in and pick on one person mm -hmm. and trying to get everyone in on it. Or, the route she chose was to just be mean. Yeah. Like she was just mean, just to be mean. Wasn't even really trying to be funny about it. And I think some of that was the acting choice. Like she, she chose to play this. Okay. I'm mean. I'm a mean girl and I'm going to play it as mean as I can be. And the way she, I don't know if that was the director who made her do that or what, but just the way she played that character, it was a completely unnecessary character anyway, but I think the way she played it made it even worse gotcha. for me. What about you, Mike? So mine... Who are you kicking out of this party? Uh, mine was the the dad, um, the ex-husband. Matt Walsh does play an asshole in just about everything he's in. Uh, he's in Veep. I don't know if you watch Veep I don't. Ever. I love Matt Walsh. I think he's so funny. I like the, I like his real dry. I like that real dry, mean yeah. humor. And he plays it so well. He's he's hilarious and beep. You really need to watch that show. It's so good. Uh, but yeah, I hate that that's your sleigh. We were we were onto a really strong start with you our. You mean my no ma'am? Oh yeah, I said sleigh because. I mean, he was on my short list for potential slaves <laughs> for this. And you said, no, ma'am. Uh, we were off to such a great start with agreeing. And then, yeah, you took a left turn for me, buddy. I'm sorry. Ugh. Apology not accepted. <clears throat> okay. 
We want to rate this one? Let's rate it. Okay. I gave Life of the Party, I was going between low, a little bit lower and a little bit higher. Uh, I went with my higher rating. I'm going to give it three reels. Okay. I mean, it does need work, especially the beginning of this movie. It does truly need work. But I give more weight to the fact that I was laughing uncontrollably in several scenes. I mean, once this movie hits a stride, I can forgive a weak start. Yeah. For how good it, it gets. Yeah. Not ends, but like but how yeah, yeah. how good it is at its best parts. Right, right. So that pushed it just over the uh three for me. So it's a very low three, but it's yeah. a three. Yeah. Um actually uh I gave it a three also. Okay. Strictly because I went in with such low expectations and really had a had a good time like you said that had a slow start um but uh the end result overall uh is is a movie that i enjoyed and and if somebody asked me should i should i see it i'd say yeah i i don't it's another one where i would say you know you could totally wait for netflix um, oh absolutely uh there's no need to see this movie in a theater right um but that being said it's still it's still worth seeing now, Mike, I'm just uh, so I have a little note in my phone where I put in the scores that we give every movie. OK, <laughs> just because I like to follow that. And it actually does impact when I give a movie. Uh, and we have a we've given the same score on the last four movies we have reviewed. Well, we're going to we're going to have to really work hard to to disagree more. Yeah, <laughs> it's on. <laughs> Although knowing what's around the corner. I have a feeling that oh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. Paths could diverge. They could. Okay, let's uh, wrap this episode up, Mike. All right, so it's time for some weekly recommendations. Woo! I will let you start. <gasps> oh, how kind of you, dear sir. I will start. All righty. Okay, so I'm going to start with uh, one of my favorite things ever actually my favorite tv show ever uh i'm gonna recommend it because a new season of this show is about to come out on netflix uh a trailer was just released for it but uh you can watch all the old episodes on netflix now and that is arrested development oh yeah I have you ever that. seen it i uh i i watched quite a bit of it when it was still on network television i yeah. haven't seen any of the netflix revival okay so yeah the show was on fox back in it was 2003 to 2006 it's basically on for three seasons uh was canceled came back in 2013 for a season on netflix that had very mixed reviews uh did not uh did not get as much positive uh acclaim as the original three seasons so went away now it's five years later and season five is coming out may 29th now wasn't there rumors of them doing a movie yeah there's always been like since the show was canceled it's had a very strong following uh and there's always been rumors are they gonna revive it as a series or make a movie or whatever. So the series is more of than just the route that they went instead yes. of doing a movie. Gotcha. And they still, I mean, they're, they're the, the cast seems to really love doing it. Uh, I mean, and it's a big cast. It's not a little, it's not a small cast. There's a lot of ma main characters. I think about nine maybe. Uh, and a lot of them are pretty famous. I mean, you have, Michael Sarah, Jason Bateman, David Cross, Ellen's wife, <laughs> Portia, Portia Rossi. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I know that one. Yep. <laughs> uh, a lot of really, you know, great uh, actors who are doing a lot of fun stuff. And even their, their prominent guest stars who have recurring roles. I mean, Liza Minnelli, Henry Winkler, oh, yeah. uh, Ben Stiller. I mean, they have a lot of recurring characters played by actors who are pretty famous. And so to get them all back together is really cool. And I mean, 
season four is fine. They actually just re-released season four in a different cut. Okay. On Netflix. Uh, but seasons one through three of Arrested Development are the funniest things that have ever been put out on television, in my opinion. I love, love, love that show. It is. It's definitely your sense of humor for sure. Absolutely. Just kind of. I'm gathering that. I'm getting that. Yeah. As you're learning my sense of humor. Uh -huh. Just kind of off the wall, a little campy, but still kind of grounded. Uh, and just definitely silly. Definitely some dark moments. Irreverent. Yeah. Su can get super dark. But I, I love that. It's so good. So good. So I have to recommend Arrested Development and cannot wait for season five. So you might find this fun then. Um, there is a, uh, a a YouTube show that uh, that I watch and surprise, it's called the Star Wars Show. Um, but it's what's it about? It's uh, <laughs> it's about Star Trek. <laughs> um, but it's it's actually like a, a weekly show. It's only like twenty minutes or maybe even fifteen minutes. Um, but it's actually from StarWars.com and Lucasfilm. But they had um, Ron Howard on oh, last yeah. week. Mm -hmm. And who's the narrator? Of who's Arrested the narrator? Yeah. And they got him to do a recap of A New Hope, as if he was Recapping. doing it as as yeah. the uh, as the intro to Arrested Development. That's funny. And then even at the end of it, then um, he's like, and on the next episode, and he starts talking a little bit about what happens in Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> what one of the funniest gags in Arrested Development is? So at the end of every episode, they'll do an on the next episode. But at least in the original run of the show, the things that were on the next episode were very rarely ever on the next episode. Really? <laughs> yeah. It was just <laughs> extensions of scenes that actually would not happen in the next episode. They oh, were just funny. They filmed it for the episode and it wasn't actually a thing that happens. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. I yeah. Just little things. Yeah, it's it's uh it's good. What about you, Mike? Recommendation time. They just released the 40th anniversary Blu-ray for Greece. Cool. And I love that movie, but I also love Greece too. And that seemed a little repetitive. <laughs> I also love Greece Greece also. <laughs> um so for the first time ever they've put Greece 2 on Blu-ray also. So I I just got this uh, the 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 Greece collection, and it's in a this awesome steelbook case, um, and it's actually a three disc set, and it's got Greece, uh, Greece two, and then it's also got um, Greece live that they had done on on TV, like the 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 TV version, this new craze of doing these right. uh, remakes of of musicals live on TV. Yeah. Um. So. Uh, Anyway, so I, I'm just very, very glad to finally get uh, this, the nice HD versions of of uh, of Grease and Grease 2. That's super exciting. Yeah. You want a hot take? What? I have never seen any Grease anything ever. I have heard of some of the songs. <laughs> I could sing every one of them to you. Well, we'll go to show tunes Sunday night, <laughs> and you can do just that. So, um... I know we, we we like to uh to plug Nina West when we when we can on this show. So July 4th is the uh the Grease sing along at uh at Gateway. Yeah. And uh my daughter wants to go to that and she's dying to meet Nina. So uh Aww. I think we're going to we're going to go to that. A uh, tip tip from from me to you. Okay. Uh from my previous experience. Uh dress in costumes. Oh shit! Really? Yeah, it's uh, it's 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 more fun. I guess and, I'll, I'll, I'll have to bust great... out my pink my pink ladies jacket. Oh my god! Yes, you should have a a poodle skirt, and your daughter should have a leather jacket. She could be a T bird. Yeah, that would be. Which you might not even know what that reference is. Isn't that a car? No, the T birds were the the gang, the guys, and the pink ladies were or the sharks. You need to watch Grease. <laughs> uh, and watch Grease too. Michelle Pfeiffer's in it. We just got done get, talking about how much we love her. Quit being repetitive. I get it. I have to watch Grease. I have to watch Grease too. Yes. 
is the same movie, right? No. Greece and then Greece also. Greece also. Greece as well. <laughs> Greece as well. All right. Uh, okay. I'm gonna leave it at that. Let's leave it at that. Mike, if our uh if our listeners want to like, subscribe, comment, poke, prod, where should they go? Yeah, so you can find us on Twitter at Real Gay and Instagram at Real Gay Movie Show. Like our Facebook page. Uh, wherever you listen, iTunes, Stitcher, Google, YouTube, whatever. Subscribe. Leave us some feedback. Um, yeah, so we'd love to hear what you say. You can also email us at realgaymovieshow at gmail.com. And if you leave an interesting enough comment, we may screenshot it and put it on uh some of our social media and we may even read it on the show and give you a shout out how lucky would you be do you want to be our sleigh of the show do you want to be a no man what about what about our shadiest take you can be all those things you can be all those and more dream it do it all right so that's it for this week have a real gay day everyone (laughs) 